Sometimes putting up my hair feels really weird because growing up with hearing aids, I would always draw attention to my hearing aids if I had my hair up. Sometimes I choose not to wear my hair up or to wear a hat so that I don't draw attention to my hearing aids. But for this video, I think it's pretty, pretty relevant. So we're gonna do it. Welcome back, and here I am with another video, and I'm pretty excited about this one, as I'm going to talk about my hearing loss and how it affects my career, and in what ways it affects those things. I think this video is really important, and a very important kind of introduction video, as if you come to my YouTube channel, I do want there to be some background information on who I am and how I operate in this world. I was born with a severe to profound hearing loss. When you look at the chart and you see how I hear without hearing aids, and then you see what it looks like with hearing aids, there's a major gap there. You already know what I'm gonna say here, but if you liked this video, I would love if you left a like or a comment and a subscribe. Just smash all of those buttons because it does a lot for a creator like me and it allows me to keep coming back and creating new videos and sharing information about me or my life or whatever it is. So definitely go down there and hit those buttons. With my hearing aids, I use lip reading to primarily communicate with people and with that I'm able to use the breathing to piece together with the sound that I'm hearing and so I kind of need both, both of those things. I can get by with just the breathing but I can't get by with just hearing as I'm not really able to make sense of the sounds that I'm hearing and so the breathing is really essential to me being able to communicate with people. I definitely see my hearing loss as a double-edged sword. It can be incredibly challenging, incredibly frustrating, very hard sometimes. And obviously there are disadvantages that come with a disability or a difference in the human body and being able to function in the society and the world that we live in. However, I also see it as a major benefit and as a major part of who I am and how I perceive the world and how I relate to people and how I create my art and all of these things. Despite the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of the world sees it as a negative thing, I definitely find myself seeing it as a really positive thing and I want to share that with people and I want people to also see it as a positive thing and also as a thing that is just a part of who I am and why it relates to everything else in my life. So I'm gonna talk about a bunch of different things and I'm gonna try to keep it pretty brief in each of these categories. And then if you guys want me to dive deeper into some of these categories, then I'm thinking I'll make future videos about each of those categories. Communication is vital for any human being and this is also the biggest factor for me in terms of living my life and trying to achieve my goals and trying to be a functioning member of this society and living my life really like basic needs come down to communication a lot of time and that is a major thing that I can struggle with. One of the worst possible things for me as a freelance photographer, as a freelance videographer, as a functioning human in this society is for someone to say, hey, can you give me a call at this number? No. I can't. Really hard because I'm having to say, no, I can't call you, but I can contact you through email or text message or I can meet up in person. But I am not able to do phone calls because I rely on lip reading and phone calls are virtually impossible for me. This definitely impacts different aspects of my career. I'm not able to cold call people. I can't call people and discuss things over the phone, which, you know, 
could be a preferred method as opposed to email or attack. Another way that communication might be a factor is just in certain situations and it can be completely situational. There's a situation where I need to communicate with someone and I'm struggling to communicate with them for any reason or if it involves using walkie-talkie. I can't use walkie-talkie so if I'm doing something that is like an action project or outdoors and there's a long range of action happening between the person and the subject and me as a photographer and walkie-talkies are the preferred way of communicating with the different subjects and different with me and the subject then it becomes really tricky because I'm not able to do that so I either need to have someone help me and translate what's happening with the person that is up there or doing something or I'm needing to find another way of communicating whether that be text messages which can take a lot more time and sometimes isn't realistic in that situation so there is different ways and which communication can become a factor in me being able to do my job effectively and being able to do it in a safe way too. Safety can be a factor as well. There can be really small things that some people might not even think of but have a great impact on me and how I'm able to do my work and how I'm able to effectively do what I'm trying to do and keep everybody safe and make it efficient and have everybody be comfortable. So this is a few different ways in which communication can affect my career. The second impact my hearing loss has on my career through being a FPV drone pilot. So if you don't know, with the FPV, you are flying drones in a first person view. I'm gonna say you without a flick. When I put these on, I have no connection to what's happening around me in my physical world. It becomes a really complicated thing where I'm inside these goggles and I am hearing the sound but I can't make sense of it and I can't relate that to where I am for my own safety or for the drone and other people's safety. So, I'm going to take it off. I always look so silly when I put those on. It becomes a situation for me and it's very vulnerable for me to completely shut out my vision because then I'm not able to communicate with the people around me or see what's happening in my physical world. So every time I fly my drone, it's a little bit terrifying because I go into that world of the drone and if something were to happen, then I would not be able to hear it. If, some, if someone walked up to me and started talking to me while I'm flying, then I wouldn't be able to communicate with them and it would become a very stressful situation for me. Another thing that is really important for drone pilots, especially FPV pilots, is to have a visual observer so you have someone next to you who is acting out your eye and out your ears for what's around you in your physical surrounding and in your reality while you are in the goggles and you're flying. Once again this becomes this entirely complex situation in which I'm having to navigate that with touch, so I'll have my visual observer touch me in different ways to notify me if something is happening in the best way that they can. But even then, it's not quite as efficient as verbally communicating. It can be really tricky and it can be really scary and it just adds on a lot more to that situation because of my hearing loss and because of my inability to hear my surroundings and communicate with people just by listening. Third thing is swimming with a camera. If you've been following recently and you've been keeping up with what I'm up to, then you might have noticed that I've started swimming a lot with a camera here in Washington State. The main thing here is that my hearing is 
are not waterproof, so I'm not able to go into swimming pools or the ocean or go surfing or go swimming with my hearing aid. So this requires me to take out my hearing aid every time I enter a body of water. Once again, this is another incredibly vulnerable situation in which I am entering a fresh pool of water without any hearing whatsoever. Especially here in Washington, I am usually the only person out there swimming in the frigid cold water. So there's two things that happen here. One is in order to get to the ocean here, you have to hike in a little bit. Once again, normally I'm alone and I will hike down to where the ocean is and then I have to leave my stuff on the beach and some of these areas are known for theft and you just never know. When I get down there, I usually change and take out my hearing aids and put them in a backpack and then I hide the backpack and I hope that nobody finds that backpack and steal my $10,000 years. <laughs> which can be extremely stressful and just kind of another layer that I have to think about every time I go swimming here. The other thing is obviously the vulnerability and the safety aspect, the aspect of communicating with people on the shore or on boats if I had to. I'm still going out there and I'm still swimming. I'm not going to stop doing that, but it doesn't mean that I'm not scared or thinking about the things that could go wrong. Number four, how my hearing loss affects my ability to market myself in some ways, especially with NFTs. So, as I've mentioned in my last video, I have dove into the world of NFTs and selling my art through the form of NFTs, which have been very successful for me. I plan on continuing to do that and having that be a way for me to share and get my art out there into different collectors' hands. One thing with NFTs is how people market themselves and a major platform for this is Twitter. There's a very large NFT community on Twitter and a lot of people spend time on the building their brand and building their community, getting people to get to know them and sharing their art. And through Twitter and through building that community, a lot of people are able to sell their NFTs in that way. Another really major aspect of Twitter, which is probably one of my favorite parts about the platform, and that is Twitter Spacer. And this is really great because you're able to actually talk to people and hear them, and you can have more multiple people kind of chiming in on a conversation. So it's a really beautiful thing and it's a really beautiful way to connect with different people around the world and develop that, that relationship with different people. But this is where it gets really tricky for me. When I first jumped into the NFT space, I did not know how to use the Twitter space and all I was able to understand was that it was a verbal chat room basically and I was not able to do that. Fortunately, I did discover that Twitter Spaces had captions for Star Live. It's great because as people are conversing and talking, then the captions show up and I'm able to follow along by reading that. And sometimes it can be it can be a little tricky because it can be delayed or the chat room can be so big that it's like all over the place and it's not able to really make sense of the different conversations that are happening. However, for the most part, it works really well and it's a big factor in allowing people who have hearing loss to be able to participate in the spaces, which is really important, especially if you're in a community like the NFT community where people are getting to know you through these spaces and you're able to market yourself and sell your art in the Twitter space. However, a major problem has recently come up where when Elon bought Twitter, the caption got taken away and they no longer work. And so for the last few months, I have not been able to 
be a part or participate in any of the Twitter spaces, which was arguably one of my favourite parts about Twitter and one of my favourite ways to connect with different people in the NFT community. So having that taken away from me is extremely frustrating and it's really difficult because now I'm not able to participate like most people are and I'm struggling to keep myself relevant in that space because I'm not able to speak and converse with people and so it's been really difficult in that sense as well and people are saying that they're working on it and that the captions will come back so when they do I am going to be absolutely thrilled because it is a major thing for someone like me and I do know of other people who have a hearing loss and they're facing that same struggle and it's just really sad and it's really like shitty to see that you know like that people can participate in these things because they have a hearing loss or because they have a disability it's definitely a shame for me and I'm just kind of waiting for them to fix that issue with the caption so that I can keep doing what I was doing before and I was having a lot of fun and hosting spaces as well so I was able to start my own spaces and have people come in and we would just talk about life or talk about NFTs or photography. So it was really special being able to bond with people in that way. The fifth thing that I want to talk about is people's perceptions of me, the perceptions of what my capabilities might be and this is a really tricky thing to talk about because I'm only speaking from my point of view and my own personal experience and this is valid in my point of view and everybody else's point of view in terms of certain situations. What I'm trying to get at here is sometimes there is no doubt that people see that I have a hearing loss and in whatever way that they are considering me as a potential hire for a job, a gig, a photography project, whatever it is, then they are probably considering my capabilities and how they're going to communicate with me and how we're going to interact. So I think when sometimes when people find out that I have a hearing loss, I have no doubt that that sometimes affects people's decisions on whether they choose to hire me or not and for whatever reason they have, whether it's a valid reason or it's not, that can definitely happen and I've had that experience before and I'm sure that I will have more experiences like that. I think this particular thing is a more difficult nuance to navigate because I get it at certain times. I think in certain situations, I understand why someone might go with a different person because they're able to communicate more efficiently or because they're able to do things that I have a harder time doing. And that, unfortunately, is kind of the reality of my situation, which is really hard for me to accept and be okay with and talk about it, you know, because I like to believe that I'm capable of anything and I would never want my hearing loss to stop me from doing all the things that I want to do and that's been my life theme pretty much is just proving to myself that I can do everything I want to do and I'm going to do it, you know. So people have asked me this before if they think my hearing loss affects me being able to work with certain people or get hired at times 
and my answer to that is definitely I think there are people out there who might be intimidated by the fact that I have a hearing loss. They might be inexperienced and they might not know how to communicate with me or how to interact with me and they might be really nervous about that and they might not want or have the patience to go through that with me and to work with me and so these are all very realistic things and these are things that I also deal with on a daily, everyday life level and it's just something that I have dealt with, I am dealing with and I will continue to deal with for the rest of my life and so that is just kind of like how it goes for me and as well as other people who are differently enabled or disabled and that comes with a lot of the stigmas and the stereotypes and the way our society is built which is not really built to accommodate a lot of people like me or who are differently enabled or disabled or whatever it is, a minority. That can definitely be a thing and I wanted to include that because I do think it is a factor in how it affects my career because I certainly see it as something that might take away from my career. But I also want to add that it also adds to my career. I say that because I'm able to point out this difference in myself and tell my story and I'm able to add on that nuance for people who might see it valuable, like I see it, I see it as a very valuable thing and something that I have grown to accept about myself and have wanted to share with the world and tell my story. On the flip side of the negative connotation is that I'm able to tell people, hey, I have this thing and it makes me really unique and it makes me see the world a lot different from other people and I want to show you how I see the world and how that might benefit you or how that would work really well with you. Once again, I think it's a double-edged word where it can go either way and it depends on how my how someone who is looking to hire me or someone who is considering me for a certain project sees me sweet well my light back there died so I think that means it's time to wrap this up and I pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about and I really just wanted to kind of dabble in each of those things and if you are wanting to know more about either of those things definitely leave a comment below and I can make a video diving more into those categories and how my hearing loss might affect my life or my career. Thank you so much for being here and for being interested in my perspective on the world and how my hearing loss affects my career and just my life. Well, that's all for today and thank you again and I will see you next time.